You'll hear me say throughout all of these videos on ethical hacking that enumerating users and groups is important. Actually, username, password, and domain name is an absolute godsend. It makes our job so much easier. It makes the entire attack that much easier. Once you have a username and a password, hopefully a domain name, that really gives you the ability to log in locally. It often gives you the ability to get in remotely. It often gives you the availability to do email access over the web, all kinds of great access, uh, because generally speaking, most systems are designed to make life for a user with a valid password very, very easy. Same thing with an attacker. If an attacker has a username, valid password, domain name, life gets very easy for us. So one of the first steps there is enumerating usernames. Enumerating usernames is far easier than you think. Many companies, I would say most companies that I work with, have a standard for computer names, uh, laptop computers, desktop computers, anything like that. And that standard usually is the username of the person that actually is assigned to it, possibly with a little suffix like one or two. So for example, my computer might be Mike Dan 3 or Mike Dan Laptop. Well, that's great. If we're scanning a network and we find machines with those names, well, we probably have a username out of that. We probably know a username that is associated with that machine name. If we find out on that machine what domain it might be a member of, we now have a username and a domain name that are probably related to each other. Now we just need the password. And although it is a little bit harder to get the password than that, once we have it, we've got pretty much everything we need. And in fact, in a lot of cases, we now have a machine that we can remote back into from outside the network and use that to launch further attacks. Fantastic element of information, having usernames and domain names. Uh, having group names is also important, and I'll show you a little bit of information about those. They're a little harder to get than usernames, believe it or not, but that's just more a uh, function of usernames being used in inappropriate ways, like as machine name prefixes. And then once we've got all of this information, built up our catalog, built up our data, uh, built up our nefarious network map, we're going to use it all to identify and prioritize based on the results of those. And then certainly, most importantly here, something I haven't mentioned for a moment or two and I wanna remind you of, is when we're doing ethical hacking examinations, we want to stay within the boundaries that we have defined. So if we find five domain controllers in five different domains, but our scope specifically constrains us to one domain, whether it's because the testing is specifically against one part of the company or just because we've got one example domain that they want us to use that they don't worry about getting loss on, remember to stay within the boundaries that have been documented in the process. Do not attack systems, even if you find them, even if they're super, super tempting. Do not attack or compromise systems that you find that are outside the scope. At this point, while we're enumerating the target, it's actually a little bit harder to know which ones are easy targets or which ones are, are valid targets and which ones are not. Once we've got this full scan, this full enumeration, this idea of, of a network map, we do our best to eliminate the ones we're not supposed to touch and potentially ask our referee or umpire if we need to know, should this be in scope or should not that not be in scope? Those kind of questions are important here because we haven't actually attacked anything yet. We've scanned, we've footprinted, we've enumerated, we've identified, but we haven't conducted an attack yet. So before we conduct an attack, we should decide these are the priorities and these are the systems that are in or out of bound. That's awesome. That's what gives us a list of targets of interest. And targets of interest are systems that have either recognized usernames. So if the CEO's name is Fred Smith, great. There's a machine called Whack Whack Fred Smith or Whack Whack Fred Smith Laptop. Fantastic. I think I know where I'm going first. Easily understood system names. Often they'll have an operating system prefix where they'll have the word DC in it or they'll have a region name. Uh, these naming conventions are fantastic for administrators, as I mentioned, and they're also great for ethical hackers. 
So for example, I find a system called WACWAC SEA DC 001. Well, it's probably in Seattle and it's probably a domain controller or WACWAC PHX dash DNS dash 02. Well, that's the second DNS server in Phoenix. Okay, cool. I now know an awful lot of information just from the system name. Well-known services, exploitable weaknesses is obviously a, a prioritization if it's within boundaries and gives us something that we can use. Any compromise potentially has value, but it may not be the highest priority. It may just be some random user's Windows XP machine. It may have an old patch level, but it may not actually be very interesting. No data on there, no credentials that we can use, no launch point. So not that we're not going to hack it, but we may wait to hack it until after we enumerate some of these DNS servers and look around on our domain controllers. Targets that enable you to cover your tracks and get back into systems are also important. So if that XP machine I mentioned earlier is vulnerable, it may not be interesting as a target for the attack, but if we can simply stick a back door on there so that we can reconnect easily, or if we can use it to help erase uh, the traces by making the attack look like it's coming from that machine, well, that's a fantastic benefit that we get out of this attack. So it's kind of nice to find those systems early on if they're usable. But remember, it's not something that we want to spend a lot of time attacking. In this phase, it's more about just identifying which systems we'll use for those purposes.